Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. In the hot seat, the head of the U.S. Postal Service goes before the Senate as controversy grows over cuts and mail delivery. And a 15-year-old boy is hurt when gunshots come flying into his bedroom. But we begin with breaking news here at noon. A big ruling on Governor Gretchen Whitmer's handling of the coronavirus. The Michigan Court of Appeals has upheld a lower court ruling saying that the governor has not exceeded her emergency powers. The judge ruled her executive orders fell within the scope of her authority. Governor Whitmer was sued by the Republican-led legislature. In other news this afternoon, the future of the U.S. Postal Service and its role in this year's upcoming presidential election is in the spotlight today on Capitol Hill. The head of the U.S. Postal Service is testifying as we speak before a Senate committee. Michigan Senator Gary Peters asked about the slowdown in mail and the removal of mail sorting machines. Did you discuss these changes or their impact on the election with any Trump campaign officials? No, no, sir. These if so th these changes in our total analysis here and going forward, and, and remember, I'm one new person in the organization with this with, with the whole structure around me, an operating structure, an executive team around me that are involved in these decisions. Okay, and uh, we the, the having any but moving forward, trying to have any negative impact on the on the election is an outrageous claim. Will you be bringing back any mail sorting machines that have been removed uh, since you've become Postmaster General? Will any of those come back? There's no intention to do that. They're not needed, sir. The post office warned that mail-in ballots might not make it back in time to be counted. But earlier this week, Louis DeJoy announced any operations would be suspended until after the election. And now we want to keep you updated on what's going on with the coronavirus here in Michigan as more help is coming to the unemployed in our state. The federal government has approved the state's request to provide an extra $300 a week in benefits. And there's a new White House declaration naming teachers critical infrastructure workers. That means that teachers are subject to the same kinds of safety guidelines as other essential workers like doctors and police officers. Teachers can continue to work even after exposure to a confirmed case of coronavirus, provided they are asymptomatic. Today, Wayne County Community College announced all in-person courses will be moved to virtual. And Fort Field has just announced that there will be no fans at the Lions' first two home games. Wayne County will start up jury service again with summons going out soon. Local 4's Rob Maloney shows us what's changing to keep jurors safe during this pandemic. They have been trying to resolve cases online since back in March, but here we are looking at Labor Day and the chief judges decided, you know what, it's time to get back into the courtroom. And so they're going to start on September 21st here at the Frank Murphy Hall of Justice, but they intend to do it safely. Jurors will be provided with a PPE kit, complete with additional masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, and wipes for their usage. A four minute long court made video also shows they'll provide a face shield for those with medical conditions, preventing them from wearing a mask. These are just a couple of the many changes to the courthouses. Chief Judge Timothy Kinney tells Local 4 six months was long enough to wait, considering the curve is far flatter than back in March. People who are who have been waiting for, for months and months to have their matters litigated, um, we needed to move forward. And we needed to uh, do it as uh, quickly, but also as carefully as we, we possibly could. There is lots of plexiglass installed everywhere, juror chairs and deliberation room seats all six feet apart. They'll start out with just two courtrooms, judges taking three week rotations using them. Civil trials will resume in person at the Coleman A. Young Municipal Building in mid-October. And if all goes well. After uh, two months, we're hoping to then expand to uh, four courtrooms and we'll see how those problems resolve themselves and then we'll expand beyond that. But I, my expectation is that for the end of this year, uh, calendar year 2020, we will uh, be limited to probably at most of four uh, judges. Because everyone is going to have to wear a mask inside the building, they know that there are going to be people who get summonses who have underlying health problems. And in those cases, the court is going to be fairly lenient about postponing your jury service until months from now. In downtown Detroit, Rod Maloney, Local 4.
All right, Rod, thank you. The Michigan Fitness Club Association is in Lansing today to call on Governor Whitmer to reopen gyms. They created the Work It Out campaign to show the importance of personal health in fighting COVID-19. They say gyms can be a part of the, the solution and not the problem. We're here to help. We need to get healthy. And we've put these amazing environments together to do just that. Um, we understand it's not a zero standard. We understand we're in a pandemic. We just want to be be here like everybody else and not singled out and think we can do an amazing job. Um, and it's time to let that happen and we want to work it out. Gyms throughout most of Michigan have been closed by executive order since March 16th. A 15 year old boy is in critical condition this afternoon, shot in his own bedroom when bullets came flying into his home. This happened on Three Mile Drive right near Mack and the border between Detroit and Gross Point. And that's where local force Priya Mann joins us now live this afternoon. And Priya, what are you learning? Well, Everard, that 15 year old Cast Tech student was in that back bedroom. He was just playing video games when somebody walked up and started shooting. Multiple shots were fired into the home. That teenager came out of his bedroom and told his grandfather he was in pain. That's when he realized he had been shot three times. He was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. There were other people in the house as well. About eight to 10 people were inside the home. Nobody else was injured. Now at this time, it's not clear if this was a targeted shooting or a random shooting and Detroit police are investigating. It happened around 1150 last night. Anyone with information is asked to call Detroit police. Reporting live, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. All right, Priya, thank you for the update there. Right now, police are on the scene of a deadly shooting at a Coney Island. It happened earlier this morning at the Parkside Coney Island. It's on Hamilton near McNichols and Highland Park. Where we're gonna get more information on the circumstances surrounding this shooting and more about the victim. A woman was killed in a fire in Taylor overnight. This happened at a mobile home on 5th Street. We do have calls into police to find out that person's identity as the cause of the fire is still being investigated. Take a look at these intense flames from earlier this morning of a house fire on Detroit's east side. Now Sky 4 captured this video here. The house is on St. Louis right near Seven Mile and Mound, but the home we should point out did appear to be vacant. The Democratic National Convention is officially in the books. Susan McGinnis is in Washington for us this afternoon with the historic convention and a look at what's ahead for Republicans next week. Oh, say can you see? With the nation's first ever virtual convention now in the history books, Democrats Joe Biden and Kamala Harris hit the virtual campaign trail after laying out their vision for America. This is our moment. This is our mission. At a convention constrained by a pandemic, pomp and circumstance, crowds and balloons replaced with videos, virtual speeches, and remote appearances. Together with Joe and Kamala in the White House. Biden promising to battle systemic racism and climate change, but paying special attention to the battered economy and the coronavirus. We'll never have our lives back until we deal with this virus. The tragedy of where we are today is it didn't have to be this bad. Biden also hitting an emotional tone, connecting with those who have suffered loss. I have some idea how it feels to lose someone you love. That was Joe Biden. That was not a speech writer. That was no one putting words in his mouth. Uh, those words came from his heart and his soul. The new nominee did not mention President Trump by name, but laid out the case for replacing him. Character is on the ballot. Compassion is on the ballot. Decency. Science, democracy, they're all on the ballot. President Trump trying to steal the spotlight all week, attacking Biden on Thursday. He spent the last half century in Washington selling out our country. With the Democratic ticket set, the race is on, with just 74 days left as Republicans get ready to make their case for re-electing Donald Trump next week. The Biden-Harris team reports it set an online fundraising record this week, money they will need to get their message out in this one-of-a-kind election. In Washington, Susan McGinnis, NBC News. All right, Susan, thank you for that. The Republican National Convention is next week. It starts on Monday, and NBC News will have special coverage at 10 o'clock every night. And then stay with us, of course, for Local 4 News at 11. All right, there's a lot more to come right here on Local 4 News at noon, including Brandon with your forecast. Out in the intense sunshine, luckily the humidity hasn't cranked up yet, but we are cranking it up for your weekend, tracking any storm chances next. All right.
Brandon, thank you for that. And it is sentencing day for actress Lori Laughlin and her husband in that college cheating scandal. Up next, how long she's likely to spend behind bars. And it's been called a historic threat as tens of thousands of people are being forced out of their homes as wildfires move dangerously close to busy areas in California.